that you have the right to damn someone to hell. Nobody's condemning somebody to hell. Mm -hmm. They condemn themselves to hell. Mm -hmm. We're just pointing out their teaching is false. Right. Hello. Now, what would you do if God told you to literally beat the hell out of someone? Find out what my guest did next. I hit him in the chest. You think once is enough? Two, three, four times at least. The power of God hits this man. He's kind of doing one of these flurlings and he falls forward. You think I'm done. Something comes over me and I dive onto this man. Throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> the baby. Then the baby's on the floor. He ta have you ever seen someone play soccer? Yeah. Have you ever seen them uh, kick a soccer ball? No. He does that with the baby. You said Sid Roth is a charlatan. And I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you said he's a charlatan and a huckster. He's neither of those. I know it for a fact. Yeah. I know it for a fact. He's Good neither of those. My guest received supernatural knowledge and authority on how to reverse aging. It's not vitamins, exercise, dieting. No, no, no. Next. This audio teaching series is based on an open vision that Dr. Bridges saw. It was literally raining Skittles candy out of the sky. God said to him, this represents ridiculous favor and miraculous provision that I, God, want to pour out upon you. Sid genuinely believes in the things that he promotes, otherwise he won't promote them. Skittles candy out of the sky. He's called me and said, you know, yeah. what do you think about this? I have a concern doctrinally. I said, yeah. That's not good. He goes, okay, fine. This person wants to come on. They're really popular, but I can't have them on because of, of X, Y, Z. So according to Dr. Michael Brown, he's helping Sid Roth vet the guests to make sure that only the really good ones go on the show. The bad ones don't go on. Wow. Wow. Someone started flying in my guest's meeting. I mean, he flew out the door and he says... We haven't seen anything yet. Are you ready? Would you like to live in divine health, never have sickness, never have disease? How would you like to administer healing to other people and see results exactly like Jesus? And see results exactly like Jesus. My guest has all his prayers answered quickly, very quickly. He says, you can get the same results and even better. My guest says Jesus is the original time traveler. You said he's a charlatan and a huckster. He's neither of those. I know it for a fact. Yeah. Time travel is real, and he has proof. Next. My guest says every believer can have the Issachar anointing. This will give you an incredible advantage over every one of your enemies. My guest has been given supernatural tools and strategies to win. She calls it next level. And now it's your time to win, win, win! My guest guarantees genuine God encounters like Paul and others in the Bible. How would you like to have your own personal access code to unlock the supernatural? The code is next. I've known Sid since the 1980s. I've had family members that have worked side by side with him. He's neither a charlatan nor a huckster. Can you imagine my guest saw Jesus pull 1,000 demons out of a single woman. A spirit get opened, a body got opened up, and I saw a spirit, and a spirit was surrounded with that, what looked like a beehive of thousands of, of, of demons with twinkly eyes. I saw the golden hand of Jesus go into her body and be, pu begin to pull the spirit. They were tied to each other, it was like a long tail, and they began to come out like that. Jesus taught my guest how to pray, and now, she expects God to answer every prayer. She says, this is your finest hour. 
and you are called to be a glory carrier. At age four, my guest experienced the tangible glory of God, and the glory continued. Imagine what he's like now. My guest says it's normal to experience miracles every day. Ready to be normal? My guest will teach you how to biblically ascend up to and descend from heaven at will. My guest has been to heaven and to hell. My guest operates in the new, greater glory. Are you ready for this new level of glory? My guest was a believer in the Messiah. She even met Jesus, visited heaven, but one day found herself and many other Christians in hell. Perry Stone was mentored in the supernatural as a young man, but few, unfortunately, had mentors like he had. Now Perry wants to teach you secrets from the invisible world, such as angelic encounters, the coming greater glory, and even ancient rabbinical secrets from the temple days. And frankly, I have never heard these before. Next. Uh, hallelujah. Now, Jim, Jim, hang on, Jim, don't interrupt me. Jim, 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 don't interrupt me. Whenever my guest speaks on the fire of God, many have their own encounters with the fire. My guest operates under the same shaft of heavenly light or portal that Jesus walked under. He says it's available to all believers. Now, interested? He's going to launch at me as he's launching towards me. This cross appeared now. This cross appeared now. So this guy was in hell fighting the devil when a cross suddenly appeared. Don't you think they'd have a no crosses allowed rule in hell? But uh, oh well, what do I know? She was shown how to live in the glory the manifest presence of God 24-7. These keys restored her life. Want to learn how you can live in the glory 24-7? My guest prays not for victory, but from victory. Big difference. It's called glory warfare. Praying from victory, it's rigged. You can't lose. Want to learn how to pray from victory for all of life's problems? For the last 20 years, I've led people in warfare to destroy the works of the devil. And like in 92 to 2001, I traveled all over the Pacific Rim nations, led them in the warfare to stop the devil's plans for World War III. Well, he God owns it all. No, he don't. No, he don't. Because if he did, you'd have no seed to sow. See, you have to understand who you are. Everything Jesus has, you have. Now, are you willing to exercise it? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hit, Hit the, the bar. bar. I'm Steve Kozar. I'm Paulette Kozar. And of course, we've got Lucy Kozar, who already knows what's coming. Wow. She's been laying on my lap just fine hey. until right this very minute. Lucy, you're on camera. Everybody wants to see your, your beautiful face. She's like, forget it. So I got a new large screen TV, and I spent all day pounding this thing into the wall, this heavy duty bracket. It's too high, so I got to redo the whole thing. I'm sure you're really sad for me, but the screen's kind of high, and we seem kind of small compared to it. Everything's a little out of whack. Anyway, speaking of out of whack, <laughs> we're going to listen to Dr. Michael Brown on the Line of Fire. He's he just did a video called "How to Deepen Your Discernment," and uh, this just came it's up. Ironic. It's ironic. Um. I actually got a text from Justin Peters saying, hey, he's going to do one of those call-in shows about discernment. Can you believe it? You know, of all the people that be talking about discernment. Right. And then he sent me the link later in the afternoon and said, hey, Jim Osmond called in. And who's Jim Osmond? Jim Osmond's another pastor guy, really solid teacher, Reformed Baptist guy. He's <laughs> actually on AGTV with us. Okay. Uh, AGTV is an app that you can get for, what is it, 
six six dollars ninety nine or six dollars no, five ninety nine. Okay, six. Bucks. It's not six dollars. It's five ninety nine. I, I still don't like that trick, even though I, I know it's supposed to work. Just say it's six dollars. But anyway, it's an app with a lot of good Bible teaching. We have a, some videos on there too, and he has a whole series about um, what's the God does not whisper. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he's a really smart guy, and he called in, and this was really interesting for me to watch. Hey, by the way, shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, we're so glad you guys are here. It's so exciting. Wow. What's God going to do in today's video? I don't know. Let's just check in and see. (laughs) Here we go. Uh, I've been tracking Dr. Michael Brown for this whole time that I've been doing the sermon ministry. And the story behind the story is that we were going to a charismatic church and I had some real concerns about various false teachings. And he's one of the guys that I found thinking, this guy seems really smart. I remember when you found him, you you showed him to me and you're like, he's making sense. And I, I'm tracking this, you know, I understand what he's saying and I'm feeling the same way and I'm reading the same things and... And then I started listening to more and more things from more people. And then I saw some of the real glaring discrepancies right. in what he says and, and in what he does and the way he just cannot uh, speak out against. I shouldn't say he doesn't speak out against. He's written a couple of books that he keeps promoting. But he refuses to really come down on fellow charismatics that he still considers to be brothers, even though he has some disagreements. And we all have some disagreements with a lot of people in various denominations. But we're talking about Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn. Um, so it's a it's a really... Todd White. Todd White. He's got a really weird position. And the reason why I make <clears throat> or have made a lot of content about him... This needs to get ironed. Sorry. No, no it just needed that. Well, it also needs to get ironed. I guess that's in, my job. In your free time, can you iron my... <laughs> I come home for my job. My 34-year-old shirt that somehow has a wrinkle in it. Um, he is considered one of the smart guys, one of the real uh, kind of scholarly professor types. And he has a real degree. Um, <laughs> but he, he partners with Sid Roth, who in this video you will see, he's like, yeah. Sid Roth can be trusted 100%. He's a man of God. He's my friend. He's my close personal friend. And I trust him. And Sid Roth, Just believe me. has the worst of the worst of the worst. You take the fringiest Christians in the world and the most ridiculous stories, they all go to heaven, they all it's see weird. God firsthand. Jesus plays a saxophone. Kevin Zadai is a fake doctor, just like his mentor, the notorious Jesse Duplantis, who also is a fake doctor. Here you can see on Kevin Zadai's website, he refers to Jesse Duplantis as his spiritual father. Now here's the segment from Sid Roth's show about Jesus playing the saxophone. This particular one he had was a soprano sax, and he had this sax in in his hands, and he started to play it over me. You know, because he sings songs of deliverance over us, but I found out that he was playing this beautiful saxophone over me, and he, he, he took it away from his mouth and handed it to me, and he said, you play. And I go, Lord, I can't play like that. <laughs> he said, that's because you're doing it wrong. He said, let me show you. He said, stand up. So I stood up. My wife was still sleeping. So Jesus comes into your bedroom and starts jamming on the saxophone right next to your bed, but your wife doesn't wake up? Well, I guess that way she can't be expected to verify this idiotic story. And I looked around me. He goes, see all that around you? He said, that's the Holy Spirit and the, the presence and glory of my Father. He said, that's always there. He said, what's wrong is you're not breathing in heaven first. He said, breathe that in first and then blow it through your horn and it'll work out just fine. Yeah, it just... And that encourages you to play it. Yes, (laughs) if you breathe in the dust of heaven so you can play better. Yeah, then you can do it right. Yeah, you have to practice. Just breathe in the dust of heaven. So I took a big breath and all this gold uh, air around me went inside of me and I put that horn that he handed to me in my mouth and I blew and it was exactly like Jesus had played. And so he taught me that, he said, everything you do, Kevin, should be from the breath of heaven. I mean, it's just absurd. It's yeah, a laughing it's, stock. It's sad. And he, he refuses to call it out. He, he just can't get himself to, for he whatever reason. He just says reason. that they don't agree on some things. Yeah, there's some differences, but they're my brothers. Anyway. Wow. So. This ought um, to be fun. No, this will not be fun. In I fact. Know. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm trying to be optimistic, you know. Yeah, we're going to make it fun. 
And whenever he says something that's, wow, that's a whopper, <laughs> I've got the candy ready to go. Oh. And um, I also... It's not diet candy either. Honey, thank you so much for baking these fresh homemade cookies today. And even putting that price tag on there. That was so cute. I can't have cookies. She can't have gluten and I can't have dairy. So between the two of us... I should have the cheese and he can have all the wheat he wants. So, so if you've never seen our show... We called Hit the Bar because we hit the space bar. Any, thusly. Thusly. Anytime we want to make a comment. And, and we, we interrupt the guy. We interrupt each other. Like, I just interrupted her. So get over it. That's yeah, what we do. We always have. And if you want to watch the entire program before you hear us go back and forth and banter, he'll have that yes. below in the description. There you go. So you can listen to Dr. Michael Brown all by himself, and then you can hear our take on yeah. it. Uh, he takes a long time to get to a first caller. Boy. And so I'm just going to play a little bit of the beginning here. Not and, the whole thing. No, and then I'm going to okay. skip to the part where uh, Jim can, calls Can in. we hit the bar while he's doing the intro? Sure. You, <laughs> you are free to hit the bar whenever okay. you feel I feel, feel like there needs to be some uh, rules no. here. Hang on. That cookie made me thirsty. <laughs> Product placement. I haven't worn my sweatshirt. I don't think I've worn my sweatshirt at all. <sighs> That's delicious. Somehow it tastes better in these handy water bottles. There you go. Basta! <laughs> all should pursue prophecy and that we shouldn't forbid tongues. And that it should be a regular thing in our assemblies to pray for the sick and to see them healed. For the elders to pray for the sick and see them healed. And as God is moving mightily around the world and literally hundreds and hundreds of millions of people around the world have been touched in the life and power of the Spirit today and believe in the gifts and power of the Spirit for today... I find it interesting that the critics who accuse me of lack of discernment, in my view, are, are missing a massive work of the Spirit around the world and are misinterpreting a large portion of very significant Scripture through the New, the New Testament. So, you notice how it's skipping a little bit? Uh-huh. I got an HDMI cable to go from the computer to this gigantic TV screen, and it doesn't work. The computer just doesn't recognize it. They're like, hey, we don't care. Use AirPlay. So I had to figure out how to use AirPlay. So Who figured it out? I did. Oh. You told me to keep, keep fussing until I could figure it out. But I figured <laughs> I told it out. You to, I thought you disabled it. No. Okay. I didn't do anything you said. Your ideas didn't help, but I, I appreciate that you pushed me to try to figure it out. Anyway, I, I wanted to have the... Just a larger screen. Now I have to use all this AirPlay stuff, and now the video doesn't oh, go doesn't. as smoothly. Yeah. The day after we made this video, I plugged the HDMI cable in, tried it again, and it worked fine. You know what's interesting is that he has all these grandiose descriptions of what's going on all around the world. Right. And he has no facts to prove it. Well, he is correct in that... For the past 100, 110 years, the charismatic version of Christianity is the one that is growing the most. But where are the millions that have been healed and gone through the power of the Holy oh, Spirit? I mean, if you were to back it up and listen to all of that, it's like he just has a lot of grandiose right. facts. The other thing that he's he's he just started to, to say, and, and, and I don't think I caught the whole thing, but he was saying that he starts with this assumption that everybody should be speaking in tongues, everybody should be prophesying, everybody should be healing, and that, that should be normal. And the people who are being critics are missing out right. on everything. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30, I've got to keep my mouth going this way so I don't change the volume of... Okay, thanks. Um, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, starting at verse 27. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. Now, I've heard this over and over again. It's in the footnotes of the study Bible. In the Greek, these questions have the clear implication of the answer being no. It's a rhetorical question. So Paul is saying here, not everybody's going to be a prophet or an apostle or a teacher or 
Not everybody's going to work miracles. Not everybody's going to have the gift of healing and not everybody's going to speak in tongues and not everybody's going to interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts and I will show you a still more excellent way, which, which leads to chapter 13, the, the chapter all about love. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So, um, again, these are rhetorical things, as, as if there was such a person who could move all mountains. But he's, he's making the point that all those gifts are limited and more importantly is the love that we show. So that's something he doesn't mention here, just in the intro of this. And he's giving the very standard charismatic viewpoint that people who don't want to uh, promote speaking in tongues and don't want to just assume that everybody should be speaking in tongues and don't encourage people all the time to you know, focus on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those are the people who are intrinsically wrong. They have no real position to speak about discernment because their position is so wrong. What I think is interesting is that he doesn't even go to scripture. He just says it off the top of his head. Well, I mean, he did mention the, the, the verses. He didn't read it. No, he didn't. That's what I'm saying. He didn't yeah. read it, and he didn't read it in context. He's just flippantly bring, taking it out of context yes. and throwing it out there. There is a way you can take some verses that seem to indicate that we should, you know, want these things to be continuing on today, because when Paul was writing this, those things were continuing on in the, you know, the early church. So, um. As a sidebar, I know we're giving a long intro, and if you don't like that, this is what we do. <laughs> um, we just got back from our trip to Ohio, and on the way back we stopped in Zion, Illinois, and I took some really great photos and video footage of John Alexander Dowie's home and his, his grave site. And um, uh, Daniel Long, who has the Long for Truth channel, a lot of you are subscribed to him already, so I'm not going to bug you, but you should subscribe, it, and, and he's one of our recommended channels. We're, we're working on the research to do a big project, which is a book to finally compile in a uh, easy to read format, the unbelievable um, false teaching and fraudulent activity and illegal activity and murderous, I'm really saying that as an actual word, murderous activity of the Pentecostal founders, John Alexander Dowie, Charles Fox Parham, John G. Lake, these men were scoundrels of the very worst sort, and we're going to prove that with actual historical documents. We're going to just nail the coffin shut on that topic because it really bothers us to see. It's not that this evidence is hard to find. It's actually easy to find. It's just that everybody keeps repeating the same assumptions that this is a great move of God. The entire Pentecostal movement is just this amazing miracle. It's all good. It's just growing and growing, and there's nothing bad about it, when in fact... There's some really bad things that have happened right from the very beginning with the founders themselves and ever since then. I'm not saying that all Pentecostals and Charismatics are not Christians. We don't do that here. We don't make these blanket statements. No. We never have. We really try not to do that. Um, okay, so goes. so let's keep him going here Look for a little this. bit more. Yeah, she, she's shedding. She's shedding right now. She's going to have a bath tomorrow, but she doesn't know it, which is good because yeah. then she would run and hide. Yeah. So... You could argue both ways, well, who's lacking in discernment? But my goal is not to defend myself and not to throw stones. Rather, just say, hey, everybody, we're back. <laughs> she was cleaning the dog fur off of her. Um, where, where were we? We just, were fighting just for a second there about yes, the dog we were. fur. Um, but one of the other grandfathers or founders was the one that we read the book on. S. His Frank Sanford. Sanford. I think it's Sanders. Frank Sanford. Yeah, that was bad. Frank Sanford is completely swept under the rug. He makes Benny Hinn look like a, a choir boy. Right. He makes Kenneth Copeland seem charming and innocent. Because he actually killed people. He right. went to jail for it. Right. He went to jail for it. And it's not like we're making that up. No. That's actual It's, it's his, historical. Right. I mean, they, this is in the historical record. This didn't yeah. happen 900 years and ago. And you know, this, all of this history I knew nothing about. And especially in the charismatic church. And he, he ended up digging all this up and continually digging and in the weekend or the few days that we took to Cleveland and then back and then understanding and listening to more history, it was I, I looked at Steve, I'm like, no wonder why you're like 
so passionate about right. getting the word out there because no one's talking about the facts. No one's talking about the not, facts. Not, not exa- exactly no one, but not nearly enough. Well, I mean, yeah. well, if you think about when we would go to, you know, I'd follow the prophet around and he had all right. the books of right. all the great right. authors of all, you know, John G. Lake. The generals, so, right? Yeah, they were I the just, generals. I'm thinking, why haven't I, why have I never heard of them? They're so important. The charismatic movement, and I don't want to say this about every person. And there are some of you who watch our videos, and you are charismatic or Pentecostal, and I know you're not in this camp. I know you're out there, so right. I want to make that clear. But overall, the general audience, the general uh, group, is in a um, it's a it's a protected bubble of ideas. And those ideas, it's an echo chamber. That's one of the terms that people use. They're just repeating the same ideas back and forth to each other. And no one outside of that set of ideas ever is allowed in. So uh, even if we write this book and keep making videos, we're not going to change that. Because when people don't want to get new information because they believe what they believe and they love what they love. That's it. That's it. You can't do anything about it. So let's keep going. Here's what I have seen is scripturally practical. This is what has worked in my own life over the decades to keep me out of falling into deception or getting involved in some kind of cult or following some false and dangerous leader. And why this has been on my mind lately as well is I picked up a biography oh of uh, Jim Jones, <laughs> People's Temple, with ended mass suicide slash murder of 900 adherents in, in Guyana. And... I just started reading about his life and wanted to see how far off he got, how quickly, how did he stray? How is it that so many followed him? And in the midst of the massive deception... Did he even start out right? He was very closely associated with William Branham, another general in the faith, who was an absolute fraud. He was a scoundrel. He was a con artist. He was a pathological liar. I have been communicating with John Andrew Collins, who's written books about the uh, the whole history of. Uh, he grew up there. His his he grandfather was personally affected by it. His grandfather was the pastor that took over when William Branham was killed in a car accident in 1965. William Branham is one of the people that people like Dr. Michael Brown refer to as a great leader, a, a, a miracle working healer, just like Todd White is, and just like Benny Hinn. Or, and now we have. The same type of characters, but with different names. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a little slicker. Right. They have new tricks, Can he? but they're really not different. Um, did you want to say something more about what he just said? Nope. I kind of lost track. Okay. Nope. Perception that he lived in, in Jim the Jones. midst of his right. delusions of him being Jim. Jim Jones actually. Um, oh well, I don't know if I should share this because John Maybe Collins not. is going to. We're going to do an interview as soon as I can figure out how to do interviews better. Um, he's found a quote from Jim Jones who said that these people like William Brandon, they're all in, it's a, it's a money wagon or something. Yeah. He was accusing them of being in it for the money. So he was more sincere than the people that everyone else claims is the good guys. And they all say Jim Jones is the bad guy, which obviously he is. He right. T- he turned into a horrendous cult leader. Right. But they all had a foundation of we're hearing directly from God. Right. And we're getting new revelation, which means we can change the rules. We can make the Bible say new things or, you know, change the meaning. That's really kind of at the core of why the Pentecostal charismatic movement has such issues. And the people in that movement who are the the best are the ones who are really super, super cautious. And they're not the ones who are at the top. They're not the leaders. They're not right. the ones who run the show, unfortunately. But I know you're out there some God incarnate type individual in the midst of his own sins his sexual sins and his abuse of power and his manipulative false miracles and all of that as dangerous and hellish and ugly as that was there were other things that drove him socialism being at the heart of it but really trying to work for racial equality really trying to work for the rights of the poor as a white man standing in, in impoverished black communities that have been subject to racism for so many By the way, a lot of the Pentecostal leaders, especially going back to William Brown, I need a few of those. They were racist. 
Charles Fox Parham was a racist, an open racist. You don't have to dig to try to find it. It's in his own words, in his own writings. Okay. And so Jim Jones, he's absolutely correct. Jim Jones hated the racism that he saw in the in God's generals. Okay. So he actually did do a lot to try to segregate. The I meant to say desegregate the races in in the South. So he's right about that. So many years. And it seemed that he really believed in that. In other words, that that was really important to him. And as much as there was his own pride and ego built into it, there was a lot of good that he was doing. And people were drawn, not just because of the alleged miracles and all of that, but because this was a community really trying to live this out in significant ways, in ways that got the attention of local governments, and in ways that, that really was true, really were true and real. Even his own family of adopted children, when, when he adopted an African-American boy, it was the first African-American child to be adopted by a white family in their state. It, it was a historic moment. And, and he really did seek to live a lot of things out. So the lesson is there are always going to be some kinds of mixtures. As, as it's been said, deception is very deceiving. And throughout Scripture, there are warnings about don't be deceived, don't be deceived, don't be deceived, don't be deceived. Back in 2008, when what was known as the Lakeland Revival began, I was excited to hear reports from people that I knew about the presence of God coming in extraordinary ways. In okay, so he's talking about the charismatic day of infamy, and uh, we did a video about that. I made a video prior, and I have an article that I post every year on June 23rd, and he is telling the truth here that he was not... Uh, go, he didn't go to the event. He didn't promote the event. However, ever since the event ended, all of the leaders of that movement are his close personal friends. He has them on his show. He goes on their shows. He's a guest speaker. He goes to all their conferences. So he's going to make a point that I was against the Todd Bentley thing. Okay. Which he was, but who cares? You're in favor of all the other stuff that all those people are doing, all the people who promoted Todd Bentley. And so that they were the apostles and they also yeah. moved in the prophetic. Well, then why didn't they see who Todd Bentley really was? If they have this incredible gift of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. unlike the cessationists and the, the lower-tiered Christians who don't see with the Spirit like they do, the cessationists were the ones calling out Todd Bentley from the beginning. Right. I'm sure there were charismatics calling him out, right. too. He was an obvious fraud. Um, anyway. In worship, I was excited to hear about people being touched. I was very concerned when I heard the main vessel, the main man preaching was Todd Bentley. Because years earlier, I had been involved with his board with some issues of, of sin in his life because of which he, he had stepped down for a season. And I had concerns in terms of his scriptural foundations and his moral foundations. But I also felt from the Lord, just don't touch this, don't get involved. But I did. So he felt from the Lord, don't touch this, don't get involved. Hmm. You don't need to have God touch you with a Todd Bentley character. You don't have to have a spiritual insight. Just go to Scripture. Just go to Scripture. Is this man teaching biblical or not? And Otherwise, he he's bringing in mysticism. That's a form of mysticism. Right. Yes, you're right. I did journal. This is an accident waiting to happen. I knew, as one of the leaders in the Brownsville Revival called into service in the revival 11 months in and serving together with three other main leaders and then a whole team, I knew the attack we were under. I knew the intensity of battle that comes when you're in certain spiritual positions. Excuse me, but if he knew that there was a problem with Todd Bentley and, that's the, and then he's talking separately about an attack of the enemy, it's like common sense. Okay, if you have this person that you're concerned about with these issues with this horrible sin in their past and they're coming forward and you are concerned about that, how can you say, well, then there's this outside attack. It's like you got this lunatic up there yeah. doing these weird things. Yeah. And seriously. Satan doesn't have to right, get involved. Right. You've already invited Todd Bentley into the whole thing. <laughs> right. Satan's That's like, hey, you guys saying. got it. I'm going to go work on some other things. I mean, it's, it's... It's really dumb. It's... But you see what he said there in the beginning, though. He said, I was excited about the miracles I heard about. I was excited about the things of God. So whenever being, there's... The people being touched. Yeah. But he does not describe what that means. I mean, we've they, seen some good being touched stuff in the other videos, which is like Heidi Baker stuff, which people are 
you know, rolling around on the floor screaming and yeah. in agony. That's, I mean, that's what they think is good. And I looked at this and said, this is an accident waiting to happen. I was concerned about it. And then when I saw friends of mine, major charismatic leaders, basically saying this is the next thing and God's hand is on him and he's being used and laying hands on him. And you know, Nancy and I dubbed it a coronation service. I didn't even want to watch it. It was so embarrassing and difficult for me to watch. I will also say that the pastor of our charismatic church, our former pastor, I brought this up to him and he said the same thing. He hated the Todd Bentley fiasco. Right. It was Rick Joyner. It was Bill Johnson. Right. It was Shayon. It was John and Carol Arnott from the Toronto Blessing Church. They were all there on stage promoting this guy, as well as C. Peter Wagner, right. the guy who invented the term New Apostolic Reformation. He called everybody apostles. Right. He said, as a, an apostle of Christ, I now proclaim this the great right. thing. They all did. So to this day, do you see Michael Brown uh, cutting himself off from any of those men? No. He loves those guys. He's on their shows. He promotes them. With the exception of Todd Bentley. <laughs> yeah, Everyone's everyone. trying to go away from Todd Bentley. Yeah, it took him a while, but yeah. So there is no discernment in this group. Right. That's the point. Now, he might have a little bit more discernment. The fact that he didn't go to this particular uh, revival thing. Wow, that's that's amazing. A lot of people didn't go to it because they saw how crazy it was. I, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of credit, Dr. Michael Brown, for seeing that the um, Lakeland fiasco was a fiasco. Anybody could see that. The real question is, why are you still so closely associated with all the leaders who right. let that happen and kind of put their tail stamp between their legs yeah. and just pretended like it didn't happen and swept it under the rug and After kept giving doing their stamp of approval. Yes, they all mm -hmm. approved of it. And then they were like, oh, well, we were completely wrong. We Let's just forget about fraud. that. Forget about it. It all fell apart. We all said this was the thing that wasn't going to stop. They all said it. They said this is a new move of God. And unlike the, unlike the other moves of God, this one's going to continue until Jesus returns. And then it fell apart within weeks. Nasty. And she insisted, she said, no, you have, you have to watch this. You can't just, this is happening. As, as difficult as it is to watch, terribly grievous. And then right after that, the whole thing collapsed. And then he was found to be in sin and so on and so forth. And I wrote, Todd Bentley was having sex with the intern, uh, or he was, he was having an affair, and he was in the middle of divorcing his, his wife and kids, uh, divorcing his wife, leaving his kids, so he could now get remarried to this intern. And everybody knew it. And they all said, yeah, well, but he's a great man of God. No, he's not. That's the very definition of somebody who is not a great man of right. God. Yeah, but he did miracles. Actually, no, he didn't. He just shouted and yelled and acted like a lunatic. Right. Yeah, so. I've written about that. In my book, Authentic Fire, I talked about that. My feeling then, my feeling as this happened, and knowing some of the leaders involved and knowing them to be people of integrity and God-fearing. No, they're not. Right. They're, the the they're, definition the, of. The, you're me, you just took the word integrity and you changed right. it to mean not integrity. Right. Unbelievable. But this is what he always does. You, you always go to this subjective, I know them to be great men of God. <clears throat> right. Hey, but we've got all this evidence. The, the first thing he does... Then we're is, throwing stones. We're, we're, no, first he tries to ignore the evidence. Okay. I don't have time to look at the evidence. If he finally has to admit the evidence is there, then he goes, oh, so you're a mean person now because you're trying to make someone out to be a bad guy. You're a Pharisee. You're a Pharisee, and you're calling them a false teacher, which means they're not Christians. So you're condemning them to hell. That's his tactic, and you're going to see him do and that. And we're going to see that. And bearing good fruit in ministry in so many ways. Then I looked at this. And so they bore the worst possible fruit. Right. Bill Johnson did. R Rick Joyner and Bill Johnson were the two guys who were given the important task of uh, kind of bringing Todd Bentley back to a, a right standing within the church body. Restoring. They were going to restore him to ministry, which they didn't. They finally gave up on him. And then just in the last couple of years, word got out that he was doing horrible, horrendous, sexual, perverted Icky, 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 icky stuff that we can't even talk no, about because kids don't watch want this to. show. Yeah. Right. So these these are not men of integrity, right. by definition. Unless integrity means you can promote absolute frauds and perverts 
and pathological liars. Because you feel that it's the right thing to do. Because God told you to, to restore them, and then you finally have to admit that, eh, this didn't work. Never mind. Let's move just on. Let, let's pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. Oops! But we're also the ones who hear from God, who are living in holiness, who have these incredible godly lives. And just believe us. Just believe us. Just right. trust us. And said, so this is like a public judgment on the charismatic church and our lack of discernment. I wrote the book Playing with Holy Fire as a charismatic, talking about abuses within our movement. At the same time, I see all the good that God is doing. And just as I will work with someone who is a non-charismatic and work with someone who is a Calvinist and, and on moral and cultural issues, say work with a conservative Catholic. And so people where I have very different views, some closely within the body, some more extreme cases, I can work together wherever I can. I'll do that. And then where I have differences, I have differences. And then where it would cause me to cross a line to work with someone, I won't do it. And what is that line? It's whatever he wants it to be. Right. Unless you go to scripture and see what the line is. Well, and, I mean, really. Yeah. And he's going to, um, He's he always makes the line different depending on the situation. And, and how, who the man is or who his friend is that right. he wants to come alongside. And I think that's really important. And the reason why we're stopping this man so many times with these little phrases is because he is so smooth and he is so eloquent with, you know, bam, bam, yes. bam, that you can't even pick it up. Right. He's very smart. I would never debate him. I would lose. I think almost anybody would lose against him. Not because he's saying things that are intrinsically true. Mm -hmm. It's because he wants to win. And I've observed him for years now. And when he has a caller that disagrees with him, he has one goal. Fight, win, conquer. That's it. And you're going to see him do that. Okay. And he has the power of the microphone. He has yeah. the off button. He yeah. mutes people he disagrees with. He did it with, um, with Chris Roseboro. Yeah. He did it with Chris Rice. Uh, the first time I heard him do it was with Anthony Wade. I was texting with him when he said, I'm going to go on Dr. Michael Brown's show, and I said, he's going to nail you. He wants to hurt you. That's why he's having you on, and that's exactly what he did. This was like six, seven years ago now. So that's that's why we keep pausing him, because yeah. we want you to pick up on these subtle nuances, because they are subtle. Remember, words mean something. Right. And to be a Christian today, you have to be a good, critical thinker. Yes. And this doesn't mean that you're damning everybody to hell. It means you're thinking critically about what leaders say, and, and you can disagree with them. That's the, that's the right kind of discerning. That's the right kind of discerning. Right. And I will always try to correct behind the scenes. But I want to draw your attention. This is another thing that he says. I will try to correct behind the scenes as if. I'm sorry. He's just making me eat that, more But that box is noisy. We have these I know. I'm sorry. Well, he's kind of. Do you want a candy bar? No. I like these. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. Sorry. What did you just say? I don't know. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> and then where I have differences, I have differences. And then where it would cause correct me to cross a line to work with someone, I won't do I'll it. correct it in the back. A and I will always try to correct right. behind the scenes. Now, here's the thing. He doesn't actually correct anybody that I know of. What does that even mean? He, that means that he's so big and so important and so influential that he can make this, this kind of overarching excuse for himself. I never call out these men publicly, but... Behind the scenes, I'm meeting with them. Mm. I'm getting together with them because when I, you know, hey, Dr. Michael Brown's on the phone. I stop everything. I got to listen to what he has to say. Mm. Now, I'm a detail freak, okay? I'm a detail freak. I keep stuff in my head. I store ideas and I remember things. And he had an incident where, well, uh, I was instrumental in getting this video out about the uh, sleazy Silent Night video from <laughs> uh, Hillsong. Hillsong Ooh, Church put icky. out a video that was part of their website, and um, I made an article, and it went viral, and a lot of people were talking about how can they do this, and so Dr. Michael Brown went on and said, you know, it, it, it did seem really uh, wrong. I, I, I tried to contact uh, people at Hillsong, and I couldn't get a hold of anybody. The leaders don't talk to him. Uh, uh, Brian Houston doesn't care who Dr. Michael Brown is. 
So finally, he got some low-level, like, associate staff worship leader at some campus somewhere who said, oh, yeah, that video was part of a larger group of videos, and it never should have been posted by itself. Someone else did that to make us look bad. So he just repeated that from a Hillsong guy. The truth was, I found the video on <laughs> Hillsong's YouTube channel. They put it up. I just shared it. <laughs> so I know the truth because I'm the guy that did it. Right. He doesn't care what I think. He'll never listen to me because... I he likes the fact that he got somebody somewhere to agree with his idea that, oh, yeah, Hillsong isn't that bad. But the the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm kind of going on a tangent, is because he admitted that he tried to contact people at Hillsong and he couldn't get any of the leaders. So they don't listen to him. Bastard. But I want to draw your attention to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And, and I want to give you practical thoughts on how we can all grow in discernment. We don't have to be deceived. So Hebrews chapter 5, we have much to say about this, about earthly priesthoods and things like this, and, and the, the superior priesthood of the Messiah. But it is hard to make it clear to you, because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So this is Hebrews saying that we should be growing in knowledge and understanding and in discernment and able to recognize the good and reject the evil. Before but all of the people that you claimed are great leaders didn't do that very thing on the largest possible scale. It was all broadcast on, on God TV. All of them are the people that you just said were great men of God, and yet they didn't do, they did the opposite of what you just claimed we should all be doing, and yet you claim they're great men of God. Okay, let's keep going. Before Jesus rebuked the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2 for leaving their first love. He said to the believers there, you have tested those who claim to be apostles and are not. So, so they tested. 1 Thessalonians 5, speaking of prophetic words, says don't despise prophecy. Test everything. Hold to the good. Don't quench the Spirit's fire. Don't despise prophecy. Don't put out the fire of the Spirit inspiring these prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to that which is good. So the very first fundamental is to be soundly saved. That's good. In other words, to not just be a church goer, to not just be someone who had a religious background or who once prayed a prayer of, of profession of faith, but to truly and genuinely know the Lord. It, Okay, let me just play a little bit more because I want to get to the In part. other words, there, there are people that we're trying to disciple and help grow who've never truly been born again, who do not actually have an ongoing relationship with God. So this may be self-evident, but I want to start there. There needs to be the foundation of a real, genuine relationship with the Lord. Everything starts there. But you say, okay... I have that relationship. I know I'm born again. I know I'm a child of God. Well, the next fundamental thing is to be people of the Word. People of the Word. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces to the very division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, we'll look at Psalm 119 in a moment. Okay, this is all good. Nothing wrong with what he's saying. I want to I want to call your attention. I don't get to use that phrase very often. To an article that I referenced before. Here it is. The biblical guide to not calling out false teachers. Uh, I posted this in February. I'll put it, the link in the description. And he's saying stuff about how individuals need to be well-trained. Great. Mm -hmm. What he's not bringing up is the issue of 
when do you separate from false teachers? When do you call out false teachers? When and do you, you physically, purposely separate? Yeah. That's what this article is largely about. Okay. And um, it's one of my best articles because it's mostly just Bible verses. Yeah. It's not me, you know, with some really grand thought. It just mm -hmm. really pounds home the idea that, and this is all just the New Testament. I didn't even bother to use anything from the Old Testament because it would have been too long. But um, here's the... Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. I would say Bill Johnson bears bad fruit in, in the name of uh, Todd Bentley. Rick Joyner bore the same terrible bad fruit. How many lives were just really devastated by what they thought was the greatest move of God that all just fell apart within weeks and all these people were confused. That's from bad leadership. That's bad fruit. Uh, so every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Fire! You want fire? That's that's one of the ways you'll have fire. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be thrown into the fire because of all your bad fruit. Right. So then you will know them by their fruits. And uh, I've said this in one of my articles in the past. Um, fruit is you look like the teacher and you sound like the teacher. Your teaching is the same as the teacher. It doesn't mean, oh, wow, look at the fruit of his ministry. He's got 10,000 people going to his church. You can trust him. That's a lot of times people misinterpret right. fruit to mean numbers. We did for years. Yeah. You, oh, he's got to be good. Look, he's got a TV show. He's got a radio show. They just show, built a new church. Built a new church. He's got the fruit on the tree. Right. That's not what this means at all. Okay. Now, here's the second part of this passage. This is from Matthew 7, by the way. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So Jesus is much more harsh right. than I think I've ever been or you know, uh, Chris Roseboro or Justin Peters or any of us. Um, there are people in the church who are not real Christians who are leading the sheep astray. It says that pretty clearly right here. They're ravenous wolves. They're there to do damage. And this idea of people actually saying to God, hey, look at all the great things we did, the spiritual things we prophesied. We cast out demons. We and they just said they said they just did it too. Yeah. Not necessarily that they actually did. We don't know. We they don't maybe know. said they did, maybe they really right. did. But it at the very least, this kind of does away with the idea of thinking, mm -hmm. Oh, he's got these claims of miracles at, at his church. That must be a good church. Those claims could be made up. Mm -hmm. They could be only partially true. Um they, anyway. Yeah. So the idea that miracles validate somebody's right. teaching just as an, a, a good place That's to go. A good point. Now, um, in that passage, we hear Jesus clearly telling us to beware of false prophets who come to us in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Shouldn't we take Jesus at his word? To assume that everyone who claims to be a true prophet actually is a true prophet would be disobeying the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. So please read this article. I really want you to. Even if you hate me in this channel and I'm frustrating you, Read this article because the, the Bible, I think, might speak in a way that I'm not doing a good enough job of. Um, also, notice that, his, that this applies to people who perform all sorts of miraculous deeds in the name of Jesus. Jesus did not like it when people demanded to see a sign from him because he knew that they were filled with unbelief. No matter what he would have done, said or done, they refused to believe in him. A lack of belief was the problem, not a lack of miracles. This is a really foundational issue that we had to come to terms with over the years. Because we were, we were in these kinds of churches. We were part of this movement. Well, it's, it's almost like two types of things. Either, um, you know, because they'll say to people, the reason why you're not healed is because of your lack of belief. Right? Very common. And then here, actually, it's saying that 
the lack of belief was the problem, not the lack of miracles. And yet when we left the charismatic, it was, well, if they just saw miracles, they would come to Jesus. But they have example after example of right. people who spoke in tongues and saw all sorts of so-called miraculous things. So how about, And they still left their faith. So how about a lack of belief was the problem, not a lack of miracles? You're not necessarily pointing that out to people with a lack of belief or that they will get healed, right? I mean, right. I mean, yeah, we need to make you. a point about yes. that. Yeah, the the idea that um, belief is something that you will have in your life once you see enough miraculous stuff going on. That's that's the, what this is. That's the encounter gospel. Yeah, that's why you got to go out there and make people's shoulders feel. And better that's what and, we're talking about with yeah. this. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said. To Jesus, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. And he answered, a wicked, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh, Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. The key is that we have all the evidence we need mm -hmm. to believe. And that's what we have in the Bible. The story of Jesus dying on right. the cross for our sins and resurrecting from the dead. That's the ultimate miracle. We don't need to have other proofs to convince us. Right. And faith ultimately, our belief ultimately, is a gift from God. So um, I think that was a good tangent. Okay. I do too. And I'm going to show you one more article. But let's go back to Dr. Michael Brown. And I'm not trying to make him look silly when I stop the... It just thing. happens. Yeah, keep it just going. happens. <laughs> just keep going. Moment, And I'm going to take calls through the show. 866-348-7884. Any question of any kind on any subject that relates in any way to the line of fire, including if you differ with me on something, the phone lines are open. But being people of the word, I always recommend worm's eye and bird's eye. Bird's eye is keep reading through the Bible. If you do it once a year, if you read several chapters a day, but keep reading through the Bible as a life pattern. So you always have the bird's eye. You never lose track of the larger narrative and the stories and truths. And then worm's eye, the things that really interest you, do extra study. Dig in deeper, a doctrine, a book, a theme, a truth, a word. And if that's a, a, an ongoing habit, and then you seek to be a doer and not only a hearer, and you're grounded in the word, that will weed out a whole lot of dangerous deception right out of the gate. We'll be right back. Like there's no dangerous deception. <laughs> yeah. All deception's dangerous. Yes. Okay, let's go. Down. If you haven't gone, go there. The first break you have, the oh. first break, in the same way, then I want to see you healthy and thriving physically. Oh, he's doing a commercial Even for the stuff he likes to. I want to see you healthy and thriving spiritually. And speaking of physical health and thriving, have you gone to vitaminmission.com yet? Have you gone there? No, I haven't. All right, write it down. Okay. If you haven't gone, go there. The first break you have, the first moment you have, mm -hmm. vitaminmission.com. We are partnering together with Dr. Mark Stengler. <laughs> Excuse me, he's been... Voted the Medina, doctor yeah. of the decade by Association of Professionals. No, sounds like he's Nation's trying not to cough. naturopathic doctor. And his supplements are second to none. The way Maybe he's burping up the vitamins that he's talking <laughs> about. Um, another side issue about Dr. Michael Brown is that he used to be really pretty overweight. Mm -hmm. And I used to get Charisma Magazine. And he did an article where he was promoting his latest book, which was published by the Charisma House Publishers. And it's a pretty big article and it drove me crazy because the whole article was about how how bad his habits used to be and he went on paragraph after paragraph i used to after the meetings i'd go and i'd eat the double cheeseburger and have a triple sunday and he's just going oh, no, no. there was no useful information in the whole thing except buy my book okay yeah so i'm happy for him that he's healthy i really am i don't want him to be uh i have no ill feelings toward him i really don't he, he drives me nuts i don't understand what's going on in his head but i i'm glad he's got vitamins and he's, it's fine if he wants to sell vitamins they're made, the dosages involved in everything in terms of maximum health benefit. And we've partnered together that okay. when you use the Dr. Okay. Brown code, you okay. get count that you get okay. things and you'll see the difference even no more. No one's called in yet. Family. 
All right. So this is a 60 minute or 58 minute video. It's 17 and a half minutes in and we still haven't had a caller yet. Um, so I'm going to play you this clip and I have to turn the volume up and down because the phone call is much softer. And I'll try to fix that in the editing so you can hear it. I might even type in the words so you can hear them clearly. But I think that's coming now. Hey, before I go on going through my list of, of seven items to strengthen you in your discernment, let's uh, let's go to the phone. Oh, here we go. We'll start in Sandpoint, Idaho. Jim, welcome to the line of fire. Hi, Dr. Ram. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So my question is that at the top of the program, you made mention of a critique that people outside of the charismatic movement would make concerning you teaching on the subject of discernment, but you really didn't answer that objection so much as you kind of presumed the legitimacy of the charismatic gifts before kind of dismissing it mm -hmm. uh, by simply saying that they would be making the same mistake that they would claim that you're making, correct? Well, well I, I was saying that they actually are the last ones that can raise that charge because of what they are rejecting. And then basically, rather than trying to defend myself, simply saying, hey, these are the principles on which I live, and let's talk about discernment. But I'm happy to answer any specific question you might have or anything you feel is legitimate and what the critics have said. Please, go ahead. Well, the, the, as a critic of that position, I would say that uh, you have given a lot of shade, in fact, shade to some of the worst and most egregious charismatics, charlatans, false prophets, and uh, hucksters that the charismatic movement has churned up in recent years, including Sid Roth and Benny Hinn and others just like it. And right. while citing Jim Jones... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so just a question for you. It was I was on his Benny Hinn's really show big. one time to get material out to the body. Uh, afterwards said, it's probably not the best choice because there's too much negative flack that came with it. That's fine, that's fine. Too much negative flack that oh, came with right. it. Yeah. We talked about this earlier. So he did go on Benny Hinn's show, and I have the videos, I might stick them in here, but I have screenshots of the it The point too. is. The point is, you should not go on Benny Hinn's show, period, if you're a real Christian who cares about people being led astray. He and shouldn't associate with His concern with was he went on it, but then he got too much flack, so yeah. he shouldn't have done that. Okay, there's a little deeper reason why you shouldn't go on Benny Hinn's show, not just because people will give you flack. This maybe was something that he said in the spur of the moment, and he, he didn't mean it to sound the way it did. But it did. But it did. Uh, let's play it again. Sometimes you... Sometimes you kind of reveal... Uh, you tell on reveal, yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're telling yourself. that the charismatic movement has churned up in recent years, including Sid Roth and Benny Hinn and others just like it. And right. while citing Jim Jones... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so just a question for you. I was on Benny Hinn's show one time to get material out to the body. Uh, afterwards said, it's probably not the best choice because there's too much negative flack that came with it. Uh, I re Yeah, it's pretty clear that he's saying, I, I'm still fine with going on Benny Hinn's show. Mm -hmm. You know what? I just shouldn't have because there's too much so, negative flack. Yeah, so, okay, let's back up a bit. Okay. Okay. Our videos are long. Let's just go with it, okay? <laughs> I got so much information. The reason why I stopped trusting him was mm -hmm. on this very issue in 2014 or 15, John MacArthur did the Strange Fire Conference. Sorry if my dates are wrong. I was close, but the Strange Fire book and conference took place in 2013. But I think it's around that time. And he wrote a book called Strange Fire. So he came out with a book, and he had a conference with, with various speakers. And one of the chapters of that book was on Benny Hinn. So it's a you know full chapter all about some of the bad things that Benny Hinn has said and done. Now... I was listening to his program during the time that that all took place, and within a matter of, I think, four months of John MacArthur's book coming out, Dr. Michael Brown came out with a book to refute the MacArthur book. And it was, uh, it was a play on words, and it wasn't strange fire. It was something, it had the word fire in it. I don't have it right in front of me. I think he's, yeah. And he refuted the MacArthur book, supposedly. And in... His defense of himself going on Benny Hinn, he said, well, that was a while ago, and I don't really know what Benny Hinn teaches. I don't really know what's wrong with Benny Hinn. I, I just don't have time to look into it. Except that you refuted MacArthur's book, which has a whole chapter about Benny Hinn. So he refuted a book 
that has a chapter about Benny Hinn full of all the bad information that you would need to see what a scoundrel he was. But he apparently skipped that chapter when he refuted the book. Wow. Does that make sense? Did, did I, did I yeah, explain that did. clearly? Mm -hmm. That's when I said, I don't trust this man. I can't trust this man. That is impossible. Right. You know, if um, he should have at least said, I didn't read this chapter. Yes, I wanted to refute the book, but I just didn't feel like refuting the chapter about Benny Hinn. But I re can refute everything else. Yeah. But he didn't even say that, no, which he, is lying. It, it has to be. There's only two choices. He's lying. Yeah. He, he read the chapter about Benny Hinn because he had to read the book to refute the book. Right. So he, he, he could be lying. And I don't want to accuse him of lying because no. I don't know. But it seems like that's the it's one choice. Weird. And the other choice is. He literally wrote a book to refute a book, but he didn't read the book that he was refuting. Right. Which right. would make him a terrible scholar. Right. This is not a scholar. This is actually a polemicist. At, 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 and that's not even the right word because a polemicist isn't necessarily good or bad, but it's somebody who just wants to fight. They just want to win arguments. Okay. That's what it seemed like to me. I've written to him privately, urging him to change aspects of his ministry. You know what? Who cares about your private writing? Nobody cares. He doesn't care. Do you think Benny Hinn is sitting there going, boy, I, I got to rethink my life because I got a letter from Dr. Michael Brown. Wow, I'm going to rethink my whole career. Do you think that he's saying that because he's in the back of his mind thinking about if you have a problem with a brother, go in, in private and speak to him about that? Maybe. That's, the only, that's how I interpreted this. But what he's really doing is he's just trying to shrug off the responsibility. The responsibility he has as any kind of a leader even if he has a tiny little ministry, and his ministry is pretty big. Mm -hmm. It's not as big as a Benny Hinn, but it's pretty big. He knows that by going on Benny Hinn's show, he is endorsing Benny Hinn. He mm -hmm. just, he knows that. Everybody knows that. A 10-year-old knows that. Right. Unless he goes on Benny Hinn, and then he refutes Benny Hinn to his face, knowing he'll never get invited on back again. That would be the only way you could say it was acceptable. So. And I've never defended any of his errors. So what's my... <laughs> then why are you aligning with them? Yes, why are you aligning with him if you, if you know he has errors? Isn't there a scripture that talks about that? Um, okay, thank you. Let me see what I got here. I'm sure he's got another article with a bunch of scripture, which is helpful. As a matter of fact, I do. Of course he does. He's um, been writing for a while. <clears throat> oh, Lucy. The Apostle Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote, Judgmental, mean-spirited, and narrow-minded stuff like this. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves... Oh, that's the same thing that Jesus said. Yeah, exactly. Savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on the alert, remembering that day and night for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. So that's the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 20. Mm hmm here he is in 2 Corinthians. For such men, talking about these people within the church who are doing damage, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. That's now, pretty strong. This verse right here, honey... Maybe you'd like to read that one. Do Galatians. You, do you need your glasses? I don't. Galatians. Galatians 1, 6 through 10. What book was it, honey? Galatians. Galatians. <laughs> I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another gospel. Not another. Not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I'll say again. Now if any man preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So he's pretty, he's being really harsh. Yeah, he is. Because he doesn't want there to be a false gospel that hurts people. And what is a false gospel? It's a gospel where you, 
you maybe even have a kernel of the gospel truth, yeah. but you cover it with layers of all this falsehood, like which in, is Benny Hinn. Like in Galatians, what he was speaking about was um, the Jews who became Christians. But then they wanted to go back Christ. to adding rules. Well, what they wanted to do it was all circumcision. So right. they said all of all which of, is a rule. That's what all I mean. of you know all the Gentiles who believed in Jesus they weren't real Christians because they had to be circumcised. So they were adding to the gospel. They were adding to the gospel, which is what he was saying, let them be accursed. Let's look at uh, Galatians again. This was an issue because of the false brothers who slipped in under false pretenses to spy on the freedom we have in Christ. These are the people who were saying, oh, you got to follow all the Jewish laws. Right. Their goal was to make us slaves. We refuse to give in to them even for a moment so that the truth of the gospel would continue with you. What about this one from Romans? Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned, and turn away from them. Mark and avoid them. Don't go on their shows. Right. Don't partner with Mark them. Mark them. Don't ha have them on for interviews because, right. you know, they're a little different than me. We have some different... Now, there, there is a place for people who have differences. Right. You know, like... Um, we're confessional Lutherans, yeah. but we do stuff with Justin Peters. Yes. We were just with Brandon Kimber. Yes. We love those guys. Yes, we have differences, but the core of the gospel is right there in yeah. all of our teachings. Yeah. We're not covering it up with all this other weird stuff. Like sending a lot of money, yeah, or $2,000 a seed offering. Yeah, and then God has to bless you with riches or, or land or... Or these claims that uh, they can hear from God and they can have this sense of what's going on and then they can... You know, promote these people and then turn around and go, oops, we were wrong. That wasn't mm -hmm. the, the man of God at all. That was a scoundrel and a pervert. Oops. But you know what? Oh, well, we're follow all us just anyway. human. Yeah, we're all just human. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Okay. Um, where were we? Uh, oh, mark and avoid them. For yeah. such men are, are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. For the report of your obedience has reached to all. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and, and innocent in what is evil. Mm -hmm. I love this one from 2 Corinthians 2.17. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. So these are just some of the verses. It keeps going. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Because so, the Bible has a lot to say about it. Now, one more thing that will be very relevant is his relationship to Sid Roth. Mm -hmm. I have uh, on the Messed Up Church website, I have a series of articles that I call Cornucopias because it's like a cornucopia, which is just a compilation. It's a compilation. Um, a horn of plenty. This is the Michael Brown, the Dr. Michael Brown cornucopia of false doctrine. So if you want more information about him and you're concerned because you follow him or used to follow him and you want to get more information from, from other people, the, all of my cornucopia articles are not just me. I try to find other people. And you have links. And I have lots of links. Uh, a lot of the history behind, and of course, there's videos here. The video that I really want you to see, I worked really hard on this video, I think about a year ago, year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> this tells us. The scoundrels that are on the Sid Roth show are really horrendous. He is a fraudulent man because he has fraudulent people on his show. And, he's, and he promotes he, them. He promotes them. They sell stuff. He's not innocent. And what Dr. Michael Brown is going to say is that he is innocent. He's right. a godly man who loves people. So who is this guy we're looking at? Now, this is our good friend, Brian Zagnoli, yeah. who um, I keep promising people we're going to do an interview. Like I said, I don't know how to do that really well Yeah, yet. we know. I'm terrible You'll with You'll figure computers. it out. Okay, so we just, just finally got a big screen. <laughs> yeah, just as an example, this is one of the creeps. The guy's a creep. This guy is a is a dirt ball. Oh, they're all dirt balls. This guy's also a dirt ball. Okay. okay, the oily Bible thing. This came out in the news that it was a total scam. That they were just scamming people out of money. It was like a, you know, like a. Pond, so, not a pond. Uh, 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 the what is it? The snake oil salesman. Snake, snake oil salesman. So you dip the Bible in the special this, oil. I, I talked to a, a guy that uh, his job is restoring Bibles, hundreds every month. He restores. He said it's not. In fact, he's watching this show right now uh, because he heard about this and he can't believe it. So what can't they believe? He's. 
making this point that this is a miraculous oil, Why? which was actually just mineral oil from the hardware store. Yes. And I actually got contact from the guy. I think his wife worked at the hardware store. Okay, anyway, so what are they trying to prove? This is holy oil, and it's just the, the Bible is making the oil come from nowhere. There was no oil poured into a bucket. The oil just started leaking on its own, and, it, and they keep filling buckets, and they're selling vials of this useless mineral oil. And the miracle that he's saying, not only is the oil emanating from the super Bible, but the the ink doesn't run. And I know a guy who restores Bibles, and he said that, yeah, the ink would run if you put it in oil. And now he's going to open the Bible, and he's going to show that the ink isn't running. And it looks great. And, 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 and why do you have this close-up right here? Up. Watch. I know. Watch. So this fraud was selling this it's oil to people who gave donations in little bottles all over the world because it had a super miraculous powers. Yet he's wearing a hearing aid. Hey, maybe rub a little of that magic oil on your ear, pal. How this looks as good as the Bible before it was in the oil. Pal. So is he innocently just allowing these guests on not knowing that they're frauds? No, he's perpetuating the fraud. He's in. He's, he's adding, responsible. He, he is responsible, totally responsible for putting anybody and promoting anybody. He is held yep. accountable for who he's endorsing because yep. he does have people that follow him and trust him. Oh, uh, millions of people. Right. Now, um, I'm not going to show the whole thing because this Good. video is pretty long, but this is great. Brian did this awesome thing. He got the, um, not the real Bible because it it's the uh, the Gospel of Judas, which is a fake Bible. Okay. And he did the same thing. He And he, he even went to their meeting. He got the oil. I think he got a little sample of it. He tried to record it. The sound was kind of hard to hear. But they were hucksters. They were charismatic hucksters. They were Pentecostal, tongue-speaking, miracle-working. Mm -hmm. They were just like all these other guys. Right. So he, he actually sat it in there, and the, um, the letters were fine. The, the ink didn't run. So Sid Roth is lying on his show to sell more of this stuff. Either that or... For, for some reason, Brian got a fake Bible and he put it in oil and it didn't run either. But all the other Bibles in the world, the ink will run if you stick them in mineral oil for a while. Um, but I'm not that kind of human being. I, I, if, if when I'm trying to get out, the devil shows up in hell and tells me, I'm going to keep you here. You know too much about the occult. You know too much. I give you too much rank, too much secrets. I need to destroy you. So as he's saying that, he's coming, he's going to launch at me. As he's launching towards me, this cross up here in hell. This cross up here in hell. So this guy was in hell fighting the devil when a cross suddenly appeared. Don't you think they'd have a no crosses allowed rule in hell? But, uh, oh well, what do I know? And I put it on him. And he fell out like a toddler, out like a toddler. And, 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 and I, so I got back up and I ran and then he told, there's no hype, this is reality. I mean, I, somewhere down the deeper part of hell, he shows up. Okay, <laughs> we gotta stop. This is a really good video. I love, what, I make myself laugh. I make videos that I think are funny. I don't know if anybody else likes them as much as I do, but this is gonna be in there. So if you don't know the connection that Michael Brown has to Sid Roth, I, I made it super clear, but he's gonna do it himself in his own video. and. In just here the next we go. few minutes here. So here he goes. Now he's, he's all back. Mad. He's back on yeah. the um, phone with who? Jim. Jim Osmond. I, what's my great sin and crime there? What, what have I done that uh, going on the show in order to get a message out to his viewing audience that I felt was important that they hear with an open door to do it and never defending his doctrine, uh, critiquing it, writing to him privately, taking issue with things, especially with raising the finances, etc. So what... How have I done what you, you said I did? That's a very serious charge. But how have I done that, sir? Do you regard Benny Hinn as a brother? Do far you as, regard him as a brother? As far as I know, he's a brother, yes. Mm -hmm. From the time I spent with him, from his yeah, profession of faith, as far as I know, he's a brother. Mm -hmm. and, and you know Do he's not. Do not that Benny Hinn is a false teacher and a false prophet? So you know. So Jim says, aren't you concerned that he's a false teacher and a false prophet? He doesn't answer. No. What does he say? He says, so you know for sure that he's going to hell. <laughs> this is his tactic. That wasn't the question. I have a, uh, a draft, I think, an article. I don't think I ever posted it. Hmm. But it was the Dr. Michael Brown manipulation tactic. 
and I actually have it in the cornucopia. This is what he does. He avoids the, the information that people want to send him. People have tried to send him my videos, and he says, I don't have time for that. I'm too important. <laughs> if, I had to, if I had to spend hours every day looking at hundreds of videos, I could never get anything done. Well, no. How about if you look at one for 10 minutes? That's the thing he's avoiding by making that excuse. Here he, he's, he's turning it on the person and saying, so you know for sure they're going to hell? I can't believe you would condemn somebody to hell. I mean, what's wrong with that, people? Nobody's condemning somebody to hell. Mm -hmm. They condemn themselves to hell. Mm -hmm. We're just pointing out their teaching is false. Right, hello. That's all it is. Right. This is the one rusty bullet he has in his rickety old gun. Arsenal. The, the chambers are empty. He's got one little rusty bullet, and he keeps trying to stick it in there because he's got nothing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Michael Brown, admit it. You got nothing. This is all he's got. Let's let, let's let him climb on the end of the branch and start sawing it. You know, if he was to die right now, it, uh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. You know for a fact that if he was to die right now, he's going to hell, correct? I can only judge by his fruit. I, I asked you a question. I asked you a question. He said, I can only judge by his fruits. Yeah, that's the scripture. So he's, so he's, he's forcing him to answer this to question. To be judgmental. Mm-hmm. You are saying dogmatically, okay, so that's where you're in very serious area, Jim. Yeah. yeah, well, that's where you really need to grow and discern. Notice, you have to... notice the smiling as yeah. he says this. It's creepy. It's creepy, and it's a manipulation technique. He's hiding, and I'm not an expert on this stuff, but right. it's pretty easy to see that he's smiling because he wants to have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. He wants to win by saying, you don't threaten me at all. I am so high above you that even though... I'm going to turn off your mic in just a minute because I can't really argue against you, which is what he always does. I'm smiling. You okay. saw him when he started. He wasn't smiling yes. at all. I have no right whatsoever to make that statement. And there are believers who have made profit off the gospel. You know what I think is interesting is that he um, encouraged him, antagonized him to be judgmental. When that wasn't the whole premise, right. that wasn't the question. The question, point. the question wasn't, you know, well, I, I think he's going to hell, don't you? He was like, no. He he asked the question, and then and then Jim's trying to say, well, the he's trying to get back to the issue of right the issue. He's, he's a false prophet. He's a false right. teacher, and you know, what and about the fruit, say? right? That yeah, we need to judge, fruit? that we need to see and, and say this is a false teacher. He goes, well, you're damning him to hell. It's like as if he's going to go to hell because it's Jim Osmond's fault, right? How dumb is that? Or you're see, you're being judgmental. Well, you've been pushing him, saying, "Well, well, he's he's changing right. the whole thing. Yeah, he's changing the whole conversation." This is so transparent when you just kind of slow it down and think about it. This is all he's got, people. Gospel and repented of it and said that was error, as Benny Hinn has done in no, recent he years. He has not spoken very plainly about serious errors. And then he goes back and does his own how, thing again. How would you know that, Doctor Michael yeah, Brown? He you have don't. Any time. You don't have any time to watch videos no. about this stuff. How do you know that? Now, I do have the time because that's what I do. Now, let's be honest. You actually do have the time and you do study other things. You just pretend when it's convenient. But we'll just set that aside for now. He, he did a, a, a post about one of my articles. <laughs> and I finally got involved on Facebook and oh, just went after him. And I took screenshots of everything and he eliminated the whole thing. He, he took it down and I wrote a huge article about it. And it's really... Really interesting what he what he did, mm -hmm. and I'll put that link in the description of this video. Mm -hmm. So, um, where were we at here? I don't keep going. But to say that he's not you are, saved, you're begging the question. You're begging the question. In order, that, in order to say that I am wrong is that you're begging the question, which is at hand, and that is that he is a believer. You're as far as I know, Jim. Jim, Jim as far as I know, as far as I know, from the time I spent with him one on one, from hearing his he just, profession of faith. He just, from people took that off his mic, didn't he? Is, is Watch his hand. As far as I know, Jim, Jim, as far as I know, as far as I know, from the time I spent with him, one no, it's, on it's one, later. Is it? from hearing his profession of faith, from people that I know that have worked with him in his own family for many, many years, that know him far better than Costi Hen know him. As Costi so, Hen family worked under him for years. Yeah. So this is a this is a real jab at Costi Hinn. He's right. implying that Costi Hinn really doesn't know anything about anything Benny Hinn. because he talks against his now, uncle. 
Now this guy here, he knows he everything. knows everything, even though he's not anywhere near as close. He was on his show one Once, time, and but he knows people. He knows people, and I think relatives. Yeah, he'll go on. This is amazing. As far as I know, he's a believer who's been in serious error, who who has taught some serious error and has repented. Of okay, so I've done the handful of minutes of work necessary to show <laughs> that Benny Hinn is still teaching this prosperity. Right. He's toned it down. He has. He really has. But it's still the same thing. Send what money to me. The favor? favor is better than money because with it's... Because it keeps bringing you more money. Yeah. The greatest harvest I think we can receive is favor. I know people look for money. It's favor. Favor is way better than money because favor will keep money coming. That is the, I think that is the funniest, uh, not funniest, yeah. but that is the clip that just and really I found sells that, it. I clicked on the first video I could find, and he said that within a minute or two of me watching it. It's not hard. Right. Dr. Michael Brown, all you got to do is watch Benny Hinn talk for he's a little bit. He's not interested in that. No, he's, he's too busy. He has his own thing. Yeah, he's so important. Let's hear more. Okay. Of teaching that serious error. As far as I know, he's your brother. But see, here, here's the big error. This is the massive blind spot. So he's ignoring... As far as I know, as far as I know, as far as I know, I know people and I trust them. This is all subjective. This right. is completely subjective. He doesn't take the as scripture. As far as I know, what of, is that? Well, and no one's asking about their salvation. Yeah. We're talking about the false prophet. The false teaching and the false prophecies. And we're talking about Like the Benny fruit. Hinn said that, uh, that Fidel yeah, Castro we're getting kinda worked up. in the 1990s was going to die. He said, <laughs> I, God told me and you can trust me. Fidel Castro will die. And... The Spirit tells me Fidel Castro will die in the 90s. Oh, my. Some will try to kill him and they will not succeed. But there will come a change in his physical health and he will not stay in power. And Cuba will be visited of God. He finally didn't die until a couple of years ago. So anyway. that's just one spot. And may God help you with this, Jim. The, the ex this is the other thing he does. He, he's, he was smiling to show I'm above you. Now he's going to say, I want to help you. I'm just trying to help you. He always does this. Yes. Instead of saying, I'm arguing against you because I think my position is right and yours is wrong, and I want to debate you in a, in a kind of a fair way, fair way mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to show once again that I'm above you, so I'm, I want to help you. I, I'm concerned for you. No, you're not. You're not concerned for him at all. Green judgmentalism. That would that would damn someone to hell. You know, he damned him to hell based on <laughs> no personal knowledge of that person's walk. Or, for example, Sid Roth. Do you believe in Sid Roth? No personal knowledge of his walk. Okay, so what this means is, hey, all that stuff that Kenneth Copeland does that embarrasses Christianity throughout the world. Ha 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 ha. The the tens of millions of views of his embarrassing spectacle of false Christianity. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. We have nothing to say about it unless we know him personally. <laughs> yeah, that's scripture, right? Oh, yeah, there's a scripture that says when false teachers enter into the church, unless you know them personally, personally you, just let them go. Let them do as much damage as yeah, they want because you otherwise you'd be condemning them to hell. Maybe that's in the... Book of Judas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's been in the oil soaking and the letters haven't run. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, this is so bad. I mean, laugh or that's, you know. This is really bad. You know, I I laugh because I'm not angry. Yeah. I am, but I can't. I don't want to get my that's blood we, pressure up that really high. So for people who don't think we should be laughing. Yeah. You know what? We are doing a YouTube channel. These are shows. This is our and house. We want people to, <laughs> to enjoy our shows long enough that they learn stuff. And that's yeah. what they are doing. And they tell us that all day long. So for the tiny percentage of you who think we should never be funny or tell jokes or laugh, go find another YouTube channel. I'm sure the, there's plenty of really sour, angry people who are boring and have very few views, but you'll like them. And so please just go there, okay? In the meantime... We're going to have a little bit of fun here. Otherwise, this is too painful. It is. It really is. It's painful. Roth was to die right now. He'd go to hell. That's not even the well, question. He, he again, is... And, and Jim has the guts to say, to say, to say I, I do believe that. Now, he could say, I am not going to answer your question. 
Because, well, because that wasn't you the are, question. You in... are a manipulator who yeah. refuses to address the real issue, which right. is that you are partnering with a fraud. Right. And you condone him. You promote him. You call him your brother and you are, you are doing damage, Dr. Right. Michael Brown. You're the one who is doing damage. By condemning or calling out the false, fraudulent huckster, Sid Roth, you're doing a good thing, according right. to the Bible. Genuine belief. Yes. I, 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 the of the looniest of yes. the charismatic Tell it, Jim. Hucksters. Right, right. So when you, when you slander... About That's not slander. Okay, I did a quick Google search to help you understand slander better. Put simply, slander is a legal term used to describe defamation or the act of harming a person or business's reputation by telling one or more people something that is untrue and damaging about them. Slander can be the basis for a lawsuit, but must be proven by the subject in civil court. So it is a legally defined thing. It doesn't just mean saying something bad about somebody. No, it's not. He's, he's telling the truth. Yeah, he is. It's a on video, you buffoon. It's on video. Go watch Sid Roth. Oh, wait a minute. You've been on the show yourself. You know what he does. So what's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody asks me, what's really going on, Steve? What do you think is going on? I do not know. But you can see I'm getting worked up because... Yeah, I know. This man is... There's something going on there that... You're hitting the, you're hitting the speakers. No, I'm hitting my... No, 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 you were... Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. No, it's okay. I just don't want you to... Yeah, he's got to calm down. Yeah, I don't know. It's obvious that he's defending these men, and he totally believes had, in them. I haven't had enough of my chocolate chip cookies. No, he hasn't. The other thing that I find interesting, too, is... <laughs> you know, he was also filling in for Sid Roth on his show. I got that in my video. Hello, I'm Michael Brown filling in for Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it is naturally supernatural. I mean, again, Jim was saying these people are false prophets. They're false teachers. Mm -hmm. They're hucksters. They're manipulating. They're lying. They're lying. Right. They're fake doctors. And he's not even, he's not even addressing that. Mm -hmm. All he's saying is, he's, he's so just... you're saying you're, they're going to hell. Okay, that wasn't the question. That's not the issue. That he wasn't turns it the, into issue. the issue because that's the one issue where he can. You're make a Pharisee, himself... yep. and you're now condemning people to hell. You poor man, Jim. That's what Rob, he's doing. Calling him a charlatan and oh, a huckster. No, 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 you're... There he goes. No, Jim, 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 turns him off. Turn off. Jim, don't interrupt me. Jim, 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 don't interrupt me. Yeah, he turned okay. him off. Yeah. Okay, he turned I, him off. You know, I told you I was a detail free. Chocolate. I didn't get fat. All I do is eat chocolate and watch these shows. <laughs> I bought that candy bar for you. I love the candy bar. Is it? Yeah. No, I do. I do love chocolate. I should only eat it though when I'm doing you this. You know what? You are you are exercising self control and Dr. Michael Brown approves of that because he did the same thing in his life. His diet book and everything. I don't want to do anything that he encourages. Well, he got he's got something. Anyway. Um you were saying something about yeah, this. Yeah, I actually um I probably have it in my lot of notes on scrap paper but I went through an entire video like this and I just kept track of how much time he talked versus the other people his, even, his, even his, in this little thing the here call in people yeah he talks the most and when people disagree with him he says please call if you disagree I want to you know I want to get you know get it out of your system and then he pushes the mute button and he talks over them he's a bully yeah that's he's a smiling bully and that's what I think is even he really is and this is not an isolated incident. Um, you know what? I want to bring this up. For those of you who watch us, I really, really, really appreciate that you, uh, you know, you're, you're supportive and you're encouraging. And I want to do more of this. And I'm going to be doing more of this. I really like proving with video that everything he's saying is just... False. It's just totally false. Mm -hmm. I like using actual clips of actual people so that they condemn themselves. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is we have um, a Patreon page and we have a support thing on the Messed Up Church. And for people who really want to support us, I, I, I want to encourage you to, to actually do that. But if you are on the fence or you're broke, please do not send us any money ever. Right. And I really mean that. We both mean that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, actually, of people sending us money when they really shouldn't be. They mm -hmm. should be sending it to their church first, and they should right. be taking care of themselves. But if you... I just set this up on our uh, The Messed Up Church. I have a store there, and I, I 
kind of hid it <laughs> because I didn't want it to be too obvious. But I sell these little prints. They're only thirty dollars each. I'm a painter for a living. I've been a painter for my whole life. And we make these own prints. Yeah. And they're and they're actually archival ink. So yes. he creates the prints. He he cuts the foam board. He writes on the back. He has a description of of the place. He gives a little story about it. So yeah, this is how he's made a living. He's painted. These are watercolor paintings. Well, some of these are oils too. It says in the back. Yeah. So and I, and I have. Um, Christmas Steve, is right around the corner. Christmas is right around. <laughs> if you're going to buy gifts, maybe consider buying yeah. some of my stuff. This is the larger versions, and that's on the Stephen Kozar, my my actual art website. These are $75. These are nicer. They have a mat. You can just put them right in a frame from they, Hobby they Lobby. The reason I'm bringing this up is I want to have supporters because I want to have all the time I need to make more videos. Right now, we're just squeezing them in between working, both her and I. And in the near future, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to do this full time. And the more money that we get in, the more I know I can do that. We still have a ways to go with getting better equipment. And so uh, this, if, if, if you see that, you know, we're, we're for real, <laughs> we're not scamming you for money. Because I know we just talked about people scamming you for money. We don't want to get rich. We, we will stop people supporting us if we ever, you know, we're doing fine. We'll just say, hey, we don't need any more. We're fine. We just want to make a living, and I want to do more of this because I get so passionate, I get so angry, and I know how to attack these arguments right. with various forms of videos. Right now, these videos we're doing are really popular, but there are other forms that I've done in the past, and there are other ideas I have for the future, and I want to have more than one format, and I have it all in my head, and it's just a matter of having the time and the money to get the equipment, and the, and the money also helps to just pay the bills so that I know I can just focus on it full time. So... I know I just took a break and did a little commercial there, but I hope you know I, I, I'm i talking to you people who are part of our core group. Okay. And everyone else, you know, don't worry about it. Thank you. Okay. When you slander a brother, I've known Sid since the 1980s. I've had family members that have worked side by side with him. He's neither a charlatan nor a huckster. He has not accumulated personal wealth through the gospel. He does not use the gospel for personal gain. I could find very little information about the financial condition of Sid Roth's organization. The official name is Messianic Vision Incorporated. And this Ministry Watch website is a place where ministries can voluntarily submit information to basically show to their donors where their money is going. And it looks like Sid Roth's uh, organization is doing very well. They have a lot of uh, assets and a lot of cash. And um, I'm not a, a, a an expert on this. I'm not an accountant. Here's the most interesting thing. I'm scrolling down here, and they seem to be doing pretty well. More money is coming in than is going out, but this is the part I want you to see. Compensation. Compensation data for this ministry has not been collected. What does that mean? It means that they are not submitting information as to who's getting paid and how much. At least that's my guess. They're sending information so that people can see the amount of money being donated and the amount of money being spent in general, but there is no information about who's getting paid and how much. Okay, here's another website, GuideStar. Sid Roth officially is... Uh, using the name Messianic Vision Incorporated. And according to this page here, you see that it is an organization that is not required to file an annual return with the IRS because it is a church. So the Sid Roth It's Supernatural show, it's a TV show, is actually, according to this website, registered with the IRS as a church. Therefore, it is not required to submit any information about its finances. Another interesting thing here is there's something called the NTEE code, the National Taxonomy of Exempt Entities system, is used by the IRS to classify the primary charitable activities of nonprofit organizations. I'm not sure why they would have a code at all since it's a church which is distinct from a nonprofit organization because nonprofit organizations usually are the ones who submit information, and you can find that in something called a Form 990. But here's what I found. Messianic Vision Incorporated is listed 
under eye diseases, blindness, and vision impairments, which I'm guessing somebody was having fun with that because it's called Messianic Vision Incorporated. I'm really not sure what this means. But they are bringing in a great deal of money, and they are being secretive about who's getting paid uh, as far as individuals go. They just show income and expenses, but they don't show anything about who's getting paid. But there's a lot of money left over because they're operating this so-called church in a way that is very profitable. Okay, I searched a little bit more online because I wanted to know the difference between a 501c3 and a church. And actually, all you got to do is declare yourself or your, your organization a church, and you automatically get 501c3 tax-exempt status. The IRS does not question you as long as you call yourself a church. But a religious organization has to jump through some more hoops. But a church, for the IRS purposes, is any recognized place of worship, including synagogues, mosques, and temples, regardless of its adherence, faith, or religious belief. Um, so it appears, and, and this might be wrong, I didn't do enough research to know with absolute certainty, but it appears that Sid Roth has simply declared his TV business a church, and he was never tested on that so that he didn't have to try to prove anything like a normal tax-exempt organization would have to prove. So the tax-exempt criteria for a religious organization, it must organize and operate exclusively for the purpose of one or more charitable purposes recognized by the IRS. The organization's net earnings must not serve to enrich private individuals or shareholders beyond reasonable compensation for services rendered. Lobbying cannot make up a substantial part of the organization's activities. The organization cannot intervene in political campaigns. And the organization's purpose and actions cannot be illegal or violate fundamental public policy. So in conclusion, it appears that Sid Roth is somewhat disguising his television program as a church. It also is uh, really fair to ask are his products fraudulent, and are they making claims that can't be substantiated? And I would say, obviously, yes, he's selling fraudulent products. But that's a topic for another day. I don't agree with certain guests that he has on. I would differ with him on different points. But I have walked with him and seen his heart for the Lord for decades. He lives a godly life. I have never met a person in a... So he leads a godly life at the very same time he has liars and frauds fake doctors right. literally people who don't have doctoral degrees they don't and they call themselves a doctor and sid roth calls them doctor so-and-so yeah that's not a godly life no that's a person who's perpetuating fraud that's a very good way to put it that's exactly what's it's, happening now dr michael brown has a real degree from new york university he got that back in the 70s it's a real university it's a real degree and he doesn't care that other people, his close personal godly friend, Sid Roth, promotes fake doctors. That alone is enough to say that's not a godly man. But it's right. more than that. He's selling crud, just absolute false teaching. Every show, you know, for $35, get this package of DVDs and books, and it's all bad teaching. It's all false. And see results exactly like Jesus. You're going to see changes in your marriage. You're going to see changes in your church. You're going to see changes in the way that you see God. You're going to see changes in how you worship Him. Your life will be radically shifted and transformed by the glory of God. Don't miss out on getting Keenan Bridges' brand new anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching, Unlocking the Code of the Supernatural, and his powerful booklet, 30 Prayers of Divine Protection. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Your Through this revelatory download from heaven, Jared Knotts must read brand new book and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series, The Science of Deliverance. Understand how spirit Spiritual freedom brings physical healing. Learn how to start receiving your healing from the inside out. Identify the source of emotional and physical issues. Renew your mind to think heavenly thoughts. Address memories stored in your physical body. Reset your DNA to bring healing. Learn how forgiveness and inner healing produce positive psychological changes. Understand how to partner with the Holy Spirit to heal your emotional wounds so the enemy can no longer use them against you. Plus, you will also receive Jerob's two prayer cards, cleansing the bloodline and DNA for yourself and for others. When I was in heaven, I had grand conversations with Jesus himself. The knowledge and the revelation that I received were two very specific prayers, specifically written 
for the cleansing of your generational trauma and any bloodline sins that are on your family right now. Don't miss out on getting Jared Nutt's must-read brand new book and his powerful four-part audio CD teaching series. And what happens is people buy them and follow and say these magic words because then you can get healed and they don't get healed and they keep in there. Then that person believes there's something wrong with me. You know, yeah. I've done this and this. Why hasn't God listened to me? He's listened to all these other people. You know, I must not be loved. I must not be a believer. God must not love me. Something is wrong with me. So that's why God's not healing me or allowing me to, you know, yeah. attain this whatever it is or this goal or my family members being saved destiny. or my dream. De- I mean, even it could be, you know, I mean, everybody at some point or other has a, a challenge with health. I mean, we all do. And a lot of the people who watch Sid Roth's show are older. Right. So much of the show is about how you can have perfect health. And and they promise, if you buy this thing, you will learn how to. Okay, I'm going to play part of a commercial from Sid Roth's It's Supernatural show. This is a commercial for some products from the fake doctor, Kevin Zadai. And I want you to notice the outlandish claims that they're making, the benefits that you will get if you buy this product. Through this book, you will sense the presence of God in a way like never before. Access supernatural answers from the throne of God. Develop an experiential relationship with Jesus through one heavenly visitation after another. Infuse your prayers with supernatural power and authority. Understand that when you pray in the Spirit, it produces angelic visitations. Begin to experience angels being assigned to assist you in a new supernatural way. Through Kevin's powerful two-part audio CD teaching, Getting Heaven's Attention, you will learn Learn the supernatural keys that Jesus himself showed Kevin in how to get the attention of heaven. Learn how you can have 100% success in your prayer life. Now, Kevin wants to give you the supernatural keys Jesus gave him on how to get all your prayers answered. This is an impartation. This is a direct uh, instruction about prayer from heaven. It's yours for a donation of $35. All right. So it's interesting. I I am um, subscribed to Sid Roth's channel on YouTube, and I didn't look at it today, but it, it popped up. A, a program they probably just recirculated it. I don't know, but it's say these words and you, you we promise you you'll get healed. Wow. Does Dr. Michael Brown care? No, he doesn't care. He knows this is happening. He knows this is That's going bad. on, and he's in favor of it. Dr. Michael Brown, prove me wrong. I have as many views on my channel as you have on your channel. So you know I'm here. You know about me. You wrote about me on your Facebook page, and then you had to take it down because I made it into a big deal, and I turned that little incident into an article that went viral. That was like four or five years ago. You know who I am. This video will get into your hands, Dr. Michael Brown. Prove me wrong. Prove me that. Prove to everyone that Sid Roth isn't a scoundrel and a fraud and a huckster and somebody who is not leading a godly life. Prove to me. Have Sid Roth go on the air and repent of all the false teachings and the false doctors who are selling false products that make false promises on behalf of God. Why don't you do that, Dr. Michael Brown? That would be the godly thing to do. That's what I would do. You know, if I found out that I was promoting fake doctors, I would be like, oh, I can't believe I've been doing this. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. You You know what Sid Roth did do? He removed a whole bunch of videos in the last year. Wow. I have a video in the makings about this. Hmm. All the people who said with absolute certainty God told them that Trump was going to win, they took down tens of millions of video views on their YouTube channels. Sid Roth is one of them. The Victory Channel, Kenneth Copeland's channel is one of them. I've got all the stats that prove they, they if you take a video down, you show on uh, a uh, analytics website called Social Blade. I'll, I'll maybe slip this in here, but... Here is a screenshot from this website, Social Blade, and you see Sid Roth lost almost 13 million video views. He dumped a bunch of videos first week of March. Now here you see the first week of August, he did something similar, and he dumped a bunch of videos, losing 17 and a half million video views. So Sid Roth, instead of admitting I made false prophecies about Trump and I invited guests on my show who made incredible false prophecies, instead of admitting it and repenting for it, and changing his ways like a godly person would do, he just removed the videos and said, eh, oh well. And we won't talk about it anymore. We won't talk about it anymore. He still has the same guests on. Robin, uh, Robin and Robin Bullock, 
The guy yeah. with the with the with the mullet. Yeah. The guy is a, such a fraud. He couldn't make it in a carnival. Okay, now here's a clip of Sid Roth interviewing Robin Bullock. His wife is also named Robin. This is right before the election happened. Who is going to win? Uh, has God shown you, Robin? Well, you know, um, I went into, I was in a meeting down in Florida. And uh, I, the, I was listening to the Lord before this meeting. And uh, this wasn't even on my mind. But this is the way it happens at times. And I turned around and the news was on and I saw Joe Biden on the screen. And uh, you remember this. I told you this. I said, uh, I looked around and just out of conversation, I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't. Just like that. (laughs) He said, he won't. And then he said this. He said, And after the election, now this is going to sound strange, but he said the Democratic Party will go underground. And I don't think that I I don't know exactly what that means, but he said they would go underground like the throne of Pergamon, the throne of Satan that disappeared and showed back up in Berlin. And he said they'll go underground and then reemerge at a later time under another thing. And, um, Another banner, maybe. Well, I, I uh, understand that because of other prophets, and I kind of piece things together. Other prophets have said that the Democratic Party will just kind of like disappear. But what mm-hmm. you're adding to that is they're not going to disappear. They're right. going to do their strategizing That's as, right. as if they're, they've disappeared. That's exactly and right. Then and then believe, I heard, go ahead. well, I heard that they're going to arise again. And this was a very specific prophecy. The Lord said they would rise again and come to power under the Antichrist. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Did we want to listen to more of this? Yes, let's let's let him finish up here. Wow. In America, who is more zealous to win people to Jesus, who will call me with biblical questions to make sure that fundamentals are right on. So when you... (laughs) So what you're saying is, you know... The doctrine that, that Sid Roth is teaching is correct because he asks for you to straighten them out. Right. So really, you're kind of behind the scenes directing the theological content of the Sid Roth Supernatural show. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Michael Brown? Because that's kind of what wow. it sounds like. Like this. Wow. That's a whopper. <laughs> that's a whopper. <laughs> By the way, the people who make whoppers. Who makes whoppers? Is it one of the, I think it's, uh, it's the Mars. Hershey Company. Oh, it's Hershey. Yeah. That's a Whopper. There's several Whoppers in there. These are full of fat. You know, actually, they do that. There are YouTube channels who actually have commercials. Mm, with we Whoppers? Have, we should have a commercial for Whoppers. I love hey, did Whoppers. you just hear a Whopper from a false teacher? <laughs> have one of these. Have, have one of these. <laughs> you make a judgment not based on Scripture, but based on your perception. and you use... but, but you didn't give them a chance. You are inserting this... This, uh, you're, 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 what's it? He's, he's taking uh, all these underlying broad based assumptions about Jim Osmond that were never proven. He never gave him a chance. You shut him off. You talked over him. You are the person who's being accusatory. Right. And you're doing And where's it. your scripture verse? Where's Do the scripture verse that scripture says verse? that allow hucksters to scam people? Right. In the church, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Show that, Dr. Michael Brown. Because that's what Sid Roth does, and you know it. Either that or you're just an unbelievable buffoon. You're an embarrassment. You should give your degree back to New York University and admit you don't have a clue what you're talking about. Why don't you put on a big red nose and get the big hair like Bozo and just... I don't know who Bozo is. What, is he a clown? Is he a clown? What, are you kidding me? Live out your life as you should, because that's what a clown is. You're a clown. If you think Sid Roth is a godly man, you're a clown. I'm looking at his face right now like he can hear me. Please, somebody send this to him. I would love to see him repent. Mm-hmm. I would love to see him actually open his eyes and look at Sid Roth and say, You oh, know what? If, if, 
if oh Sid gosh, Roth, I can't believe I've been doing this. I can't believe I let this thing go well, on. Well, and if Sid Roth actually woke up one day and saw that he was having fake people, then realizing the damage he's been doing because he has been, he has been convicted by the Holy Spirit. And I know there's a lot of people who, at the end of their video, say, you know, we pray for these people. We pray for their, um, you know, repentance. We pray for their understanding and, and the Holy Spirit turning their heart and seeing the truth and taking the, the blinders off or the... And I, and I always go back to this thing. I rarely pray for the false teachers. I pray for the people who are being confused by the false teachers. That's mm -hmm. where my whole focus is. And I probably should pray for Dr. Michael Brown and people like him. But honestly, they've got the Bible. He's a Bible expert. He's supposed to have the Holy Spirit in a way that people like me don't have. Right. So there's a part of me that says, I'll, I'll pray for the people who want help. I want to I wanna pray for the people who are confused and who are hurt, you know, who are, are in desperate places in their lives because they've been following stuff like this and they're confused. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, he's got the Bible, people. He claims to have the Holy Spirit, and yet he twists the Bible, mm -hmm. and he even twists the the words of a guy in his show mm -hmm. when he can't really argue in a in a fair mm -hmm. way. So, anyway, let's let's finish this up. You think that you have the right to damn someone to hell? That's very. Sp he loves saying that, doesn't yeah. he? That's his one rusty bullet in his broken down gun. So. You, you see this, don't you? If you've been watching this far, thank you, number one, <laughs> for putting up with us and all our interruptions. But you see what he's doing, don't you? If you don't see it, please rewind and watch us again. And rewind. really think about it. Back it up. Back it up. Very serious. And that, that is such an extraordinary it go for a while. blind spot to me that you and, and other blind hypercritics spot. Hmm. don't see. Hypercritics. That, 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 that grieves me terribly. Here's someone I've known Projecting. firsthand. Shared office space with in the 80s. So what? And known for decades. So what? And in terms of his personal life, has never never moved a single inch from wanting to glorify God, demonstrate his power, and win people to the Lord, especially Jewish people. Yeah, they... But he's okay, got a show full of okay, con men. Watch and Sid Roth's show and watch, see if yes. what he says is actually true about what Sid Roth does. And most of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you haven't. Like, and, and um, if you want to get a synopsis without having to go through hours and hours, that video I have is one hour. And you'll see enough clips that will just infuriate you. Yeah. Because I took some of them and I shortened it. Because there's a lot of commercials and a lot of redoing the same stories over and over again. It takes a while to get through them. They're kind of mm. overly done. And they have long, com really long commercials in them. Yeah, there are guests he has on I'd never have on my show and differences I have over that. No that, specifics. That just make me question whether he's saved or not. But when you call him a charlatan and a huckster. Because he right? is. He's not. He's yes, not. he is. Yes, he is. I, I, I know him. I know his staff. I know his team. Then you're a fraud, he's too. This. Now, you right. may say he, he has crazy guests on. I think he believes crazy things. But to call him a charlatan <laughs> and a huckster, you have no knowledge or evidence of that. Just... I think I believe he, he he I think he believes in crazy things. That's what he said. I'm Listen not sure. to this. He does. Not, but when you call him a charlatan and no, a huckster, we'll put back a little right? bit more. He's not. He's not. Either. <clears throat> okay. I, I I know him. I know his staff. I know his team. He's not of this. Now you may say, you may he, say he has crazy guests on. I think he believes crazy things. But to call him a charlatan and a huckster, you have no knowledge or evidence of that. Doesn't it concern you to speak such words like that and to? To, to judge others in such a severe way? Does, does that trouble you at all? Does that give you pause for thought? Well, you, you make the claim that I'm presuming to have the right to damn other people to hell. I don't have that right. I'm only exercising discernment and saying that based upon the teachings and the practices of Benny Hinn and Sid Roth and other charismatic lunatics, lunatics. who teach and practice the same things, that, uh, they well, and you said Charlotte. You said Sid Roth is a charlatan. And I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you said I apologize. I'm sorry. He's no, not, he's not. He's not. This is what he always does. He always does this. He's a charlatan and a huckster. Watch his hand. He's, he's not neither of those. I know it for a fact. Yeah. I know it for a fact. He's this neither of those. Money by selling a program and promoting some of the stupidest and most inane things to ever disgrace the in, in your opinion on his program. you know jim you are very eloquent with name calling 
with descriptions, charismatic lunatics, charismatic lunatics. He's talking to a witch doctor, and before his very eyes, the now, now you, you, most of you, you don't have a clue about what I'm ready to tell you. You've never, it's never even crossed your radar. He really, what did he turn into? First time it was a bat, big. But you, you actually saw him and... There was a man. Yeah. Turned the flashlight on to himself and went into a creature. I saw that with my eyes, yes, sir. How did you get it into your head you wanted to raise the dead? Of all the miracles down through the historical events of the Bible, I chose dead raising. Charismatic lunatics. But Jesus came to me and said, Brian, I cannot let you take this book. I can't let and he you looked take at me in the book. eyes with love that We're melted me. And he said, book. you are not ready for that book. Even though the real book of John in the real Bible ends at chapter 21, Brian Simmons got chapter 22 directly from Jesus himself. And you're just supposed to believe it, like Sid Roth. Then he promised, but I will bring you back one day, and I, will give you and I will give you that book. What was the title? Written on the cover of the book was John 22. Uh, but there's only 21 chapters in John. What's this 22? Well, John 22, go back to John 14, 12, and you'll see that there is a greater works generation. The works that I do, you will do even greater works than these. I believe the John 22 generation will be a people that do the greater works of Jesus. They will not add to the scripture, and, and that's a sealed book. But they will they not will add not to the add scripture, to the scripture and, and, and that's, that's a sealed, a sealed book. book. But so when you add a chapter to the Bible, after God gives it to you on your next visit to heaven, you won't be adding to the Bible. But it is a book that is unfolding, and the works of Jesus will be replicated by an entire generation of people that believe fully in the power of God. Charismatic lunatics. And if, if, I, had, if, if I needed to start a work and, and reach out to lost people and see them touched and work with someone that I knew would be sacrificial, that lives a holy life, that's prayerful, that cares about souls, I've worked with Sid a million times faster than I've worked with someone like you that I don't know at all, but that you can so freely damn people. Sid genuinely believes in the things that he promotes, otherwise he won't promote them. He's called me and said, you know, yeah. what do you think about this? I have a concern doctrinally. I said, yeah, that's not good. He goes, okay, fine. This person wants to come on. They're really popular, but I can't have them on. So, so oh, come on. So according to Dr. Michael Brown, He's helping Sid Roth vet the guests to make sure that only the really good ones go on the show. The bad ones don't go on. Wow. 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 He is, he is sawing that branch. He's about to go down really hard here. <laughs> Dr. Michael Brown, I want to thank you for making this video because you've condensed everything that's wrong with you in about 10 minutes here. And I want to thank Jim Osmond for calling in. Who's, he's going to get um, muted in a second here. Because of, of X, Y, Z. My son-in-law. Who cares? Who, know, who it, cares? It, it's, it's, our, it's our younger daughter's husband, one of my closest friends, a wonderful man of God, was his producer for years and, and, and walked side by side. So you may think he has loony guests on. You may think he believes loony things. But I can tell you for a fact, he's not a charlatan. And he's not a huckster. You have falsely accused him. Now, let's say he's not even saved. Let's say you're right. He's not even saved. <clears throat> you still falsely accused him of being a charlatan and a huckster. That doesn't trouble you, which means there's something fundamentally missing in your own relationship with God. Otherwise, you, you'd walk more carefully. You wouldn't just wow. be throwing these names around. Or the fact that, that you're going to question my discernment, because as far as I know, Benny Hinn is a brother. And again, I've differed with him. On various points, I've played his teaching on the air and differed with it. I wrote to him privately after being on a show where I had strong differences. But the fact that you'll quote question my discernment based on saying someone's another brother, that's that's what grieves me. And I, I'm glad you I'm glad you called. I am glad you called, but I urge you to go back to God and his word. 
And forget Sid Roth, forget Benny Hinn. But there is... Go back to God and his word. Dr. Michael Brown, you don't care about God's word. Because God's word speaks against people like Sid Roth. And you know it. All right. It's all over the Bible. He's, he's scolding Jim Osmond because right. it makes him feel... This is a bully. This is an insecure bully. I've never seen it so clear that as we're taking this apart mm -hmm. bit by bit. There is so much about the presence and power of the Holy Spirit for today in the Word and so much that God is doing around the world that, that there's a great deception to go with every current and trend, and that's why I've been bringing critique and, con and, and concern to the charismatic movement for decades. Read my book, Whatever Happened to the Power of God. Read my book. The charismatic Church Slaying the Spirit Down for the Count, which came out in 91. So he's promoting Benny Hinn and Sid Roth at the very same time he's saying, I've been against the bad teaching in the charismatic church all along. I've got a track record. Yeah. Talk about speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, he's done. He's now, the commercial break is coming. I've got those grave concerns, but boy, do I have grave concerns mm -hmm. for folks who reject the gifts and power of the Spirit for today and, and who can so quickly condemn others to hell. That's not what reasons. Jim said. Jim yeah. Jim did not say, I don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I don't believe in healing. I don't believe God. It, I don't believe God's working in the power. He didn't say any of that. He just said. You know what, though? What? This points to... He, he gets to, he starts out by saying the importance of the charismatic version of Christianity mm -hmm. and people who aren't charismatics, who think we don't have enough discernment, well, they are just wrong because, you know, they're skipping all the stuff that we do. They're skipping it. And, and so that's where he started the whole topic of discernment. So he just ended it with the same thing. Mm -hmm. What's the most important part of discernment? The gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The subjective gifts of the Spirit where God tells you things and you get to decide for yourself what you think is really important and true. I would also add that this very subjective understanding of what the Holy Spirit might be doing today leads to a complete focus in Sid Roth's ministry on new revelations, new visions, people going to heaven, speaking to God. It's extra biblical. It's never biblical. Uh, this, to me, is one of the clearest examples of why I will never go back to a charismatic church and I will never uh, accept that way of thinking because this is where it leads. I'm sorry, fellow charismatic Pentecostal friends who are watching this, but this where does he go back to? Yeah, he says God's word, which he no, doesn't really reference at all. But then he goes back to the more important matter, this great move that's going across the world, this great move of the Spirit. That's what he is offended about. He's not offended that Sid Roth is scamming people and all of his guests are scamming people. That doesn't bother him at all. He's offended by somebody who dares to speak against his personal buddy friend. They're like, you know, Holy Spirit buddies. They're all part of this Holy Spirit Club. This crazy charismatic Holy Spirit revival, signs and wonders, leg growing thing. You know, and I'm painting with a broad brush, but you kind of get the idea. I don't think he cares about the truth of God's word. He says he does, but he just demonstrated what's really important to him. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say that, but it leads to a state of delusion. Yeah, and you know, we've had that experience, <laughs> which is why I think... You know, I mean, some of you who know our story, you know, that's the road we went down and it really harmed our family. Um, Very much. And we really empathize with all of you who've shared your stories with us and um, understand to some degree the pain that you've gone through and that you are still going through trying to wash your brain clean yeah. from all of these twisted, manipulative verbiage that makes you think you're less than because God hasn't given you what the prophet back in 2010 promised yes. you. Well, as an example, he has this catchphrase he uses on his show, <clears throat> I want to have all that God has for me. Something like that. I'm not quoting exactly right. But it's basically this idea that God's got these super spiritual more. things There's to give more. you more. And you don't want to miss those. 
and people will call his show and repeat that line back to him. Like, uh, thanks, Dr. Brown, for having me on your show. And, you know, I'm concerned about something, blah, blah, blah. But I, I don't want to miss all that God has for me. So I, so they always kind of fall back in this. There's like this fear of if I get away from this charismatic stuff, I'm going to miss something more that God has. And that's just a, a, a bad foundational idea. That's delusional. Well, it's, it's taking God's word and it's saying... God's word is is okay. It's good. It's a and Jesus dying on the cross is okay. That's fine. That's fine. It's good. It's a piece of the puzzle. But what I really need is this more. I need more, more of the stuff that the Holy Spirit's promising to give me if I kind of follow the magic breadcrumb Red trail. Right. Yeah. And so, um, if you're watching us, I, I just want to encourage you to keep learning. And I'm glad you stuck with us. And I also want to recommend, as I always do, the other channels that are recommended channels. I recommend them. That's why they're called Recommended Channels. Please listen to Chris Roseborough for some really good Bible teaching. He does the best Bible teaching. I seriously say this uh, on the entire Internet. And uh, lately he's just been hitting them out of the park, the, the, the uh, shows that he's done. Yeah. You know, some people don't always like his personality because yeah. he's kind of like me. We get a little too snarky. But he's a great Bible teacher, and he yeah, really he does love God. He loves the people that he's serving, and he, and he really loves God's Word, and he's done some great videos lately. So teaching, really, really yes, in-depth Very in-depth. Much more in-depth than I can do, because he's much more of a Bible scholar. I'm not. I'm a lay person. We both are just lay people. We're just learning as much as we can, and we're trying to share that with you guys. Uh, the other recommended channels, check them out. You know what I didn't mention? I also have a whole series of other playlists, if you keep scrolling. I have one all about cults. Hmm. There's some about Jim Jones and the J J Jonestown Massacre and mm -hmm. some about the Amish and some about just cults if you're interested in that topic. I also want to mention that I'm going to be working with a few more people in the months ahead that I'm really excited about. One of them is a cult expert who will hopefully will be able to do some things that will delve into the topic of how you've been affected by your time in a cult. And if you've been in some of these hyper charismatic NAR churches, it is a cult of sorts. There is a, a lot that's the same as a cult, depending on how you want to define it. So there's more of that information coming in the future. I also want to recommend the Messed Up Church website because there's a lot of articles. Sometimes you need to read through various articles, various links, and you need to do your own homework. We can't do it all. No one person can do it all. Take responsibility for your spiritual life as a Christian and give yourself lots of time. And, of course, read the Bible. <laughs> you know, and, and definitely read the Bible. Our that's goal the is, main. That's yeah. the main. That's God's word. That is His holy word. And, the, and, and the, we know that is God's word. Yes. Uh, you know, men can say whatever. We can say whatever. Just you know, you're safe in God's word. And the thing that you see at the end of every video, it's it's yeah. really the the theme of what we do. It's we want you to read your Bible. We want you to go to a church, and that may mean that you need to take some time and figure out what that means to right. find a good church. Take your time. Yes. Get out of bad churches. Don't email me and say, I'm going to a church where they promote Bill Johnson. Do you think I should stay? No. No. Get out. Get out now. Right now. I don't care if you're a worship leader, if you're an associate pastor, if you've got all your friends there, get out now if they're teaching this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and be at peace. And be at peace. That's what God wants for you. He doesn't want you to chase an after stuff. So, yeah. Whew. I think after this we're going to be at peace finally for a few gonna, until the next until the next video. Yeah. yeah. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for putting up with me and all of my talking and bantering. I hope you found this helpful. We really want you to be blessed and we want you to grow and change. And we don't want you to lose your faith. Right. We want you to keep your faith. And your life is full because of Jesus Christ. Yes. Period. Anything more is is icing on the cake. Yep. We got what we needed. We did. We needed Jesus. That's that was what thing. we needed. Yep. And God gave that to us. We didn't deserve Jesus, but we needed him. And that was it's what we gift. have. And that's a free gift. And thank you, God, for taking care of us. Amen. Amen. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Candy out of the sky.